So I have to um, bring my phone with me today because um, I'm in queue for Taylor Swift tickets. Uh -oh. So if I start like getting all excited, in the you and everybody my else in the country. <laughs> I know. I, I know verified, four other people that are in the queue. I am a verified fan with the login. <laughs> they are Dustin. too, and their password has failed every time they've gotten to the point of getting tickets. I do. I had. I know one Taylor Swift song, but my daughter and her three friends are very excited about this day. Um, welcome again. Um, thank you all so much for coming out. I hope you enjoyed your meal. Thank you to Foodie Call for the excellent food that they prepared. Um, we have a lot left over, so we're, we're open to make to-go plates for anyone who would like one. Um, and thank you again to OCTC, Owensboro Community, and Technical College for sponsoring that food. Um, as we talked about earlier, our, our speaker today is um, Dr. Scott Williams. Um, he is president and CEO of um, Owensboro Community and Technical College. Dustin, I'm going to have to start to try to well, wonder and stay in your frame. Yeah. As long as okay. you stay in front of the flag. Okay. <laughs> he, he knows me. He knows I like to wonder. Um, I'm always thrilled when we have higher education as our speaker. I think that many of us have sat together on economic development boards. We've sat together on um, health coalitions, and we know that the pursuit of uh, education past high school is one of the biggest determining factors that we're going to improve our economy and we're going to attract industry to our region. Um, Once for our community, Technical College is just simply a wonderful opportunity to students who want to just get the feel for college and they want to try that out at, at first. And, and it's, it's great, I think, in rural communities for the fact that it is sometimes we're these students are, are first to college families and this incredible staff just takes this type of student and nurtures them and guides them and helps to prepare them for their degree or their certification to go out into their their career at that point or go on to um, a four-year program if that is what they desire but there's so much more than that and Scott I'm just gonna do your job for you you're not even gonna need to speak by the time I'm done because I get so excited about, about our community college um, it is it is such a broad range of offerings of degree programs and certifications that can benefit every sector of our community and um, we're just so thrilled that they involve themselves in their surrounding communities they're located in davis county but on any given day they have staff members that are out and about in all of the communities that support and they have students from making sure that they are integrated into those communities and we appreciate that. Um, as you can tell, I, I feel very, very um, prideful about Owensboro Community College and that's because I'm an alumna. I actually was a non-traditional student. I had a house full of little kids and I thought, I, I gotta go back to school. I need to get a degree. And they were the most incredible support staff for non-traditional students who was working a busy full-time job and trying to be a wife and a mother and um, I will forever be grateful for the wonderful start they gave me to my collegiate um, endeavors and so um, my family's carried that proud tradition on. I was just speaking with Scott about the fact that my two oldest sons took OCTC classes while they were in high school um, never set foot on campus, but were able to earn that college credit as they moved on to um, UK and U of L. And my daughter is currently; she's 17 years old, and she is a, um, a dual credit student. So she goes to campus at OCTC and loves that independence, loves the environment in the mornings, and then goes to our high school in the afternoon. And I just think that no matter what stage you're at in life, what point you are in your your career, if you feel you want to enhance your education, OCTC has an offering for you. So with that, um, I'm going to have Scott come up and tell us a little bit more. You can expand upon what I gave you, Scott. I'll do. Um, Dr. Williams um, was born and raised in Florida. I did not know that about you, sir. Mm -hmm. So who do you root for in basketball? Let's get to the real stuff. I have to confess, my alma mater, I'm a Florida fan, so. Well, We'll but, when, but but here, when they're not playing uh -huh. Kentucky, I root for Kentucky. I like that. That's a good answer. <laughs> we'll forgive the Gators. Um, he is. Um, he moved to Kentucky in 1999. 
and began at the community college in the role of um, agricultural technology and related sciences. He um, started several programs, including the biotechnology program, and he taught anatomy and physiology courses. I'm so glad you were not my professor when you were, <laughs> I was a student there. That would have been just, that would have just been um, too much for me. Um, he moved to the administration in 2008 where he served as chief academic officer and was appointed president of OCTC in June of 2015. Scott and his wife Donna live in Owensboro and um, he and his staff and faculty um, do such a wonderful job of supporting not only the Davis County, but the surrounding areas and all of their students. So with that, sir, I'm going to turn it over to you. Great. Thank Come on you, up here. <clears throat> you have to stay between here and the flag. That's Scott. what I understand. <laughs> Is it okay if I close this or will that mess that up? Do you all know? Is it okay? I'm not an IT. You can stop it if you'd like. There we go. There you go. All right. Looks like it took care of itself. You shut that down. That's right. That's right. Good morning, or actually, I guess technically it's good afternoon, everyone. So TC's already chewed me out for being just uh, being late, but uh, I do apologize for that, and uh, I misjudged my time. But uh, CC, thank you. For those of you that don't know, CC also is uh, on our board of directors at OCTC. So thank you for serving in that capacity. Uh, Curious to know. That's right. Uh, Curious to know how many others in the room. Is anybody else? Taking a class out at Owensboro Community Technical College. Oh, Outstanding. We got lots of alumni in here to join you, CC. So thank you so much. And so uh, it, it's interesting. We've served almost well over 88,000 individuals since the inception of the college 36 years ago. And put that in context, we serve four counties. We serve Ohio County. We serve Hancock County, McLean County, and Davis County. In total, that's only about 160,000 population. So we've served over half of the individuals in our service region. And I always make a joke, I hope it doesn't take us another 36 years, TC, to, to reach the other half. So, But we're working on that. Uh, before I get started, I'll tell you a little bit about the college and what we have going on. I do want to also recognize, CC said that we have a, a wonderful faculty and staff, and, and I cannot uh, say I, I, she is... Without, well, she is she is exactly right about that, and and I want to just let you all know that the faculty and staff that we have at OCTC are second to none, and I do want to recognize one of those individuals. She works down here. Uh, you'll see her down here with Hancock County High School from time to time, uh, and uh, so uh, she works on our student affairs, and that's Miss Kiri Crisp. And I want to thank her for coming down and making all the arrangements <coughs> and everything. Go, let's give her a round of applause. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the college itself. How many of y'all, well, a number of y'all taking classes. Has everybody been out to the college or at least one of our campuses? Yes, no, okay. So uh, it's, it's uh, so OCTC is really comprised. We have three co- campuses. Uh, all of them are unfortunately found within Davis County. So the main campus out on uh, 231 is where we're uh, where I'm located. Kiri's located, but we also have a campus behind Davis County High School, uh, and then we have a campus uh, more towards downtown area of Owensboro, uh, right next to the Messenger and Choir. And so those are the three campuses that we have. Uh, we have a satellite center uh, where we do some instruction in Hancock County. Um, we serve about this past fall, we had 4,600 students was our enrollment. Uh, to put that in context, within our region, uh, our enrollment is larger than if you take Brescia, Kentucky Wesleyan, and WKUO. If you added their enrollments together, our enrollment's larger than so we do have uh, we serve a lot of individuals throughout our community as i said octc serves those four uh, counties uh, with ohio county and i'll share with you in just a minute some of those numbers but ohio county is we have the second most from our service region ohio county sends us the second most students and so that's something y'all should be proud of and we enjoy working with you all down here and we do a lot of work down here in ohio county 
So the college's mission is, is, is to enhance the vitality and economic development of our area. And we do that through three means. Uh, CC mentioned two of those. The first way in which we do that is transfer education. So that students can come to us and they can earn, there's three different degrees they could earn to transfer to a university. And so uh, they can earn an associate in arts, an associate in science degree, or associate in fine arts and transfer that to any uh, public institution within the state and there is statutory laws that requires them to accept those degrees so they don't have to repeat those credits which is a benefit if you're a parent a big benefit because our uh, our, our tuition is about a third it's less than it's about 40 percent of what most of the universities are across the state so uh, that's one way in which we serve our community uh, and so that makes up about 40 45 percent of our enrollment then in addition to that, we have what we call career technical education. In career technical education is we have uh, approximately 30 different degree programs. And those are students uh, that are actually looking to get either a certificate, and they may get a certificate that just lasts up to, it may take them 8 to 16 weeks to complete, all the way up to a two-year degree like nursing in which it's a professional program in which they're going to enter the workforce after they graduate. Common question we often get is, is if I get my nursing degree, can I transfer that to a university if I want to complete my associate's degree? And the answer to that is in most cases, yes. Uh, most of the universities have gotten to the point now where they will accept those associate, we call them associate in um, <coughs> They are AAS degrees, so Associate in Arts uh, degrees. In, uh, in, um, and so those students uh, typically can transfer if they so desire. So they may have to repeat a few credits, uh, pick up some gen eds because they don't take as many gen eds. But all in all, the AAS degree is primarily for those students who want to get into the workforce or they may get a certificate in the workforce. CC, we work with them a lot. Certified Nurse Aid is a program which in, in, in sometimes as short as four weeks, but up to 16 weeks, they can get a state registered nurse aid degree, uh, get on the registry, and then go right to work, working for any kind of a health, allied health organization. And they, yeah, they're much, much needed. And so uh, we do a lot of programming in that area. So some are very short uh, with regards to that. The third and final way we carry out our mission is workforce development. And those are programs in which we will go out and work with business and industry and customize training for them. Sometimes it's for credit, sometimes it's not for credit, depending on what the company would like. And so uh, that is, is works out of our workforce solutions group, which is, is actually housed on our downtown campus there on Fredica Street. And so that group... Uh, can go out and customize any kind of education or training that you may need in your community. And so uh, that group also does our uh, GED and ELL or ESL training as well. I'll talk a little bit about what we're doing here in Ohio <coughs> County with those in regards to those. A little bit about our student demographic. Our students range anywhere uh, in age from 16 or 17 years of age all the way up to 65 plus. I don't know if, if you know this or not, but in the state of Kentucky, there is a scholarship uh, provided by the state. I think it's 65 or older. Anyone that's 65 or older can actually come out to a community college and take classes for free up to I think six credits a semester. So uh, so we do have uh, that whole range of age. The average age though of our students is about 26 to 27 years of age. In fact, uh, over 50% of our students are uh, 25 or older. So we do tend to, to really work with adults that are coming back. Um, so that is, that is kind of our demographic. We're, um, like most higher education, I can't tell you why. We just see this trend over the last five years. Uh, but we're almost 60% female and about 40% male. Uh, we currently have about 14% of our students are underrepresented minorities and the rest are Caucasian, to give you an idea of kind of what our student body is made up of. 
We also offer dual credit, which is where a student, uh, CC mentioned this, is where a student can, they, they are a high school student, they have to be in high school, and the student can take a college class, and the high school is giving them credit, high school credit for that class, and we're giving them college credit for that. We work closely with Seth here in the Ohio County School Systems, and, and I do a lot of work with those, with that group. Uh, they're one of our really solid partners as well. So let's talk a little bit about enrollment at the college. So how many of y'all have been, I've heard that uh, college enrollment has been kind of, it got hit hard by the pandemic and it's been a struggle to get enrollment back up. How many have heard that? Have you seen or watched enrollments? I knew you two would. <laughs> so enrollment's been tough in higher education since the pandemic. In fact, uh, it hasn't rebounded as strongly as many would like. Uh, I I, all the time, talking to you all out in the community, business leaders, you know, we can't find employees. Well, quite honestly, um, people aren't wanting to go to school either. So they're not necessarily, I'm not sure what they're wanting to do, but uh, it's been a struggle to get them back to school. But through our dedicated faculty and staff there at OCTC, we've been able to buck the trend. So we really have had an enrollment increase the last four semesters. And so this fall, our enrollment was up 12%. We had 512 more students enrolled this fall than we had last fall. That's pretty significant. So um, if you look at our enrollment last fall, we had a 5% increase last spring, a 20% increase last summer, a 10% increase in this fall, a 12% increase. So we are now, in fact, our enrollment this fall was the highest enrollment at OCTC since uh, 2013. So uh, we have really worked hard to try to make sure that we are providing what not only students, but what our community wants, and we have really dovetailed those together. So our enrollment has really come back. It's come back strong. We're excited about that. Uh, but more importantly, we're still seeing high graduation rates. And so we're still seeing those that are coming to us are completing and graduating. So Ohio County is our second largest enrollment area, second only to Davis County. Uh, in this fall, we enrolled 540 students from Ohio County alone, 540 students. 253 of those were dual credit students through Ohio County High School, and 287 of those were adults out of the Ohio County area. Uh, that's up from last fall, uh, almost 80 students in total, and about half of those are dual credit students. And so uh, we work well with Seth, and, and their, their dual credit program has really come along uh, very well. And, uh, the state does provide dual credit scholarships up to 12 credit hours uh, in a given, uh, uh, for a given student. So really encouraging students to get a jump start on college by uh, actually starting that while they're in high school. The idea is, is that they will continue when they complete high school and it's also an economic saving. So mom and dad doesn't have to spend as much money or the student themselves doesn't have to spend as much money when they get on there. Um, and so uh, that's worked out very well for them and everybody is concerned. About 80% of our students get some form of aid. They're, in other words, they need assistance. So almost 70% of our students are first time college going students. And so uh, they typically are either paying on their own or their family really doesn't have the means to help them out. So about 80% of our students are getting some form of aid. Most of that is in the form of the federal Pell program. So if they, if they're, depending on what their income is or their family's income is, they're able to uh, receive a grant called a Pell grant, which they can help pay for college. Uh, if they are full Pell recipients, then then the, the amount of money they receive is more than they will have to pay for tuition their entire. Uh, tenure with us and so they can graduate without any debt and that's really important we feel like that's very important I mentioned this earlier we're about 40 percent of the tuition of the next closest or public university our tuition is about 40 percent of like WKU and uh, University of Kentucky 
And so that assistance uh, really provides uh, a big help for our students. Probably the biggest thing, though, that's come along is the Kentucky Work Ready Scholarship. And Kerry can tell you more about that. But that is if a student, as long as they are a resident of Kentucky, they've not earned a, an associate's degree already or higher, they are eligible as long as they're enrolled in one of the five high demand sectors that the state of Kentucky is needing workforce in. And those include business and IT, transportation and logistics, healthcare, construction, and the last one I'm going to forget is manufacturing. Thank you. And so those five areas, if they're enrolled in any program that's involved in one of those five areas, they get tuition free their entire program. Uh, the scholarship pays for all of their tuition the entire time they're in the program. No questions asked, and so they can come out debt-free in one of those five high-demand sectors. That is uh, significant, so spread the word, if you will. So that's, uh, that's uh, if they want to work in one of those five areas, they're eligible for that, and that makes a big difference. So two other things I want to talk about, or actually three other things, and then I'll be glad to answer any questions. But uh, at OCTC, CC mentioned this. We've really tried to create a culture there of service. We're there for our students, our community. Quite frankly, we would not exist if not for you all. That's the only reason why we <laughs> exist, and we're there to serve you. We're there to serve the students that come to us. If we're not working to improve the quality of life in this community, we're not doing what we're supposed to do. And in order to do a good job of that, we have to be good servants to those that walk through our doors and need our assistance. And we have really tried to build that culture. One of the things that I've been doing the last five or six years to try to get a pulse on that culture is we do a, an employer employee um, survey, which basically just looks at, you know, gets, a, gets, gets us a measure on how they feel about being an employee at, at OCTC. So um, we've done this for about five or six years. Over the years, we've been recognized as a great college, to, it's called the Great Colleges to Work For program. It's by the Chronicle in Higher Education who hosts that. And so over the years, we've been recognized in several areas as a great college to work for. But this year, for the first time in our history, we were recognized as being on the honor roll of a great colleges to work for. So we're only, 12, we're only one of 12 community colleges across the nation to get that designation. And so our employees said that they were highly satisfied in six of the ten characteristics and those include confidence in senior leadership, job satisfaction and support, diversity and inclusion and belonging, mission and pride, faculty and staff well-being, and supervisor chair or department chair effectiveness. So there's ten criteria that they get to respond to and they were highly satisfied in six out of the ten and that's the First time in our history we've been received honor uh, in a great college to work for. And so that's a testament to our employees, our team members, and the great work that they do. And I will tell you, they are 110% dedicated to those students that walk through our doors. Uh, and they do a great job. And I think that's just an example of, of, that's a kudos to them and a recognition to them for the great job that they work. One of the things we're going to be working on this next couple of years is we were fortunate in our area. CC knows this. If you look in across the Commonwealth, actually across the nation, Allied Health and the health care <laughs> spectrum, the employment gap is terrible. They need more employees. And so not enough people are going into health care. So uh, a collaboration of eight universities and colleges is Colleges in the western part of our state got together, uh, worked with uh, some of the healthcare organizations in the area, and said, We think that we can improve, okay, we can build a stronger <laughs> pipeline of healthcare workers if we work together on a project that we call the Commonwealth West Healthcare Workforce Innovation Center. Uh, we sought from the state of Kentucky some funding to help us with this project. Uh, they were nice enough to 
agree and give us that funding. And so colleges from as far as Elizabethtown all the way to Madisonville, Hopkinsville, Henderson, and all the way down to WKU in Bowling Green, there are eight of us have come together uh, working with our healthcare uh, organizations in that same region. And uh, we're rolling out this innovation center concept. And so it will allow us to come out to the school systems and recruit students. More importantly, let them know, educate them on the great healthcare careers that are out there. These are careers where they can live in the community where they were born and raised if they so choose. They don't have to pick up and go anywhere because every one of our, even our most rural communities, have health care. And so in the, every health care organization in those needs more people interested in health care so they can fill those positions. So whether that's Ohio County Hospital or the doctors uh, that are in this region or the pharmacies or the diagnostic centers, whatever they may be, they all need qualified employees. But unfortunately, the pandemic is kind of people are saying, I don't want to go into health care. It's, you know, it's a struggle. And so uh, they've heard some negativity about it. So we're, this project will allow us to go out in all the counties and really recruit, mainly educate and recruit individuals into the healthcare field, whatever they may be. And then we will provide the training, the prerequisites to get them on track for that. And then when they graduate from high school, they can immediately go into whatever healthcare program that they so desire, whether that be nursing or radiography, surgical technology, uh, could be respiratory therapy, it could be going to kind of push them towards med school or whatever their interests may be, this program will allow them to do that. And then it also will allow us to have a center in which we can share advanced training center, if you will, that has advanced training uh, simulation uh, and allow people that can really be trained up on the latest and greatest in the allied health field. And so uh, these institutions, these organizations are coming together to try to really, I think, build a transformational model that the rest of the state can use in order to address this uh, health care shortage. And so we're excited about that and uh, we're putting all the pieces in place uh, this year and then we'll start probably the physical center next year and start our recruiting efforts next year in the spring of 2023 uh, as far as that goes. Now, I mentioned Workforce Solutions. We do a lot of work here in Ohio County with you all. Uh, and so, uh, and uh, we partner a lot with the Career Center and GRAD and, and they help us in this endeavor. But uh, our skill trained services, which is our uh, adult ed, as well as our ELL or ESL programming. We currently are running ELL or ESL classes and GED classes here in Ohio County. Uh, and uh, we've got close to 25 people enrolled in those programs combined. Uh, and so that's going extremely well. Uh, we also, uh, when Century Aluminum uh, closed, we, we put together what we call an ITEC, Dislocated Worker Program, uh, and uh, we worked with our career center and grad to get people uh, who needed that service so they could get reskilled re real quickly and back into the workforce. Uh, that program is basically, it works it's a very flexible program because uh, these individuals just can't stop everything to come to school full time. So the iTech program is designed to be flexible to meet their schedule. So they work on uh, learning some of the theory through uh, online resources, which we call Amtech. And then they can actually sign up to do their skill training, their hands-on training, and show what they can do. All they have to do is sign up and come in and do that at their leisure whenever they're, uh, 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 so they sign up for appointment to come to lab. <coughs> that program is doing quite well. We got over almost 30 people in it. Three of those are from the Ohio County area. So, uh, and so we're glad to help yeah. them. Our CDL program, we just kicked it off. Now it's been running almost a year. January will be a, a year. I'm proud to say that our two instructors, truck driving instructors, are from Ohio County. And so we're excited to have them on our faculty. Uh, and so that, that program has just exploded. 
there are actually four Ohio, com Ohio County companies right now have uh, students in our CDL program training for them, and so that's working quite well. Since the inception of the program, we've had 16 Ohio Countyans that have actually gone through our CDL program, and uh, so that has made a big impact. Uh, we are currently working with uh, Beaver Dam Nursing and Rehab, Fordsville Nursing and Rehab on Kentucky Medicaid Nurse Aid programming and courses. Uh, and uh, we've had, at this point in time, close to 20 students do that in the past year. You also may be familiar with our work-based programs like GoFame. Have you all ever heard of the FAME program? If you have, uh, we have uh, a number of those, but uh, we have a significant number of students that come out of Ohio County and participate in those. Uh, a couple of the companies that are sponsoring students in those are WPT, Nonwoven, uh, Diacel, and Ohio, and uh, excuse me, and Diacel. And since 2015, we've had 18 Ohio County students participate in those programs. In 21-22, through Workforce Solutions, we've had almost 75 students in which we have uh, worked with out of the Ohio County area. And that's on top of the 500 I mentioned earlier that enrolled in our traditional courses. Again, as a Chamber of Commerce, we're here to serve the business and industry in our area. And uh, a couple of several companies that we've worked closely with over the years here in Ohio County in addition to WPT Nonwoven that I've already mentioned and Beaver Dam Nursing and Rehabilitation of Fordsville Nursing Rehabilitation. We also have worked with Neo Industries. Uh, we work with uh, Infrastructure Precast and Young Manufacturing. We also have done a lot of work with Ohio County Fiscal Court, especially on the GED side. And we've actually done some training for them. So in short, we are here to serve y'all. We're proud to serve y'all. We are excited to be a part of this community. Sorry we don't have a basketball or a football team, so, uh, you know, but beyond that, we are here. We provide a very important function, just like the other higher ed institutions do, and that is we provide second to none, highest quality, um, most affordable educational experience in the, in the region, and it, it uh, you know, it really provides the backbone of our workforce. Uh, if you look at, uh, we commissioned an economic development study several years ago. We've actually done two uh, over that time. And the college and our alumni contribute to the economic uh, vitality of this region in the tune of about $250 million annually. And so... 92% of the students that graduate from OCTC work right here. So they don't leave once they come to school here. Uh, they decide what their career is going to be. They stay right here. And so, uh, you know, they're your, they're your children, your parents, your brothers and sisters, your aunts and uncles, uh, all connected. You can see that earlier, you know, it's touched the lives of many out there. So we're always looking to improve. Kiri knows that. She's, she, they claim I stay on them too hard about other areas we can get better at. So uh, please never forget to let us know where we can get better and how we can better serve our communities. Uh, and in particular here at Ohio County. So with that being said, I am going to open it up and be glad to answer any questions that anybody may have. And if there are none, I'll be here a little longer. But again, thank you so much. I always enjoy coming here uh, every month to y'all's chambers meetings. And uh, thank you for the opportunity for OCTC to not only be here, but to host today's uh, chamber meeting, and uh, we look forward to continuing that uh, partnership. Absolutely. So y'all have a wonderful day, and have a wonderful holiday season. So thank you all. <clears throat> Thanks, Cece.
Um, that was remiss earlier um, in not noting that our, our president, Joshua Coppedge, could not be here, and that is why I have the, the honor as vice president of getting to uh, moderate our meeting today. So, um, but I do want to mention, um, Josh, wanted to say thank you again to OCTC and all they have done for us. Um, we had just uh, some some other announcements and some housekeeping we want to take care of for the Chamber of Commerce. I'm going to bring one of our, our directors up, um, Chuck Price, and he's going to talk about our um, People Choice Awards and our Fourth Quarter Excellent Awards, um, which will lead us into talking about our Christmas gala when you're done. Good. And before I get to that, <clears throat> I'm just going to expand on a little bit of what Cece said about OCTC. Uh, I did not attend OCTC, but everybody else in my household has, has or, 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 uh -huh. or taught. Yeah. My wife, Vanessa, taught nursing at Wonderful. Orangeboro Community yeah, yeah. a couple of years yeah. in 2004 before yeah. she became a nurse practitioner and started Excellent. for a while for health care. Both of my kids had dual course credit, uh, courses, uh -huh. credit courses in high school. Uh, my daughter is currently at the University of Mississippi. She'll be a junior this uh -huh. after this semester yeah. after her third semester outstanding and my son is a current student and i just oh. want to say i appreciate the value that you all Thank provide you. to our community mm -hmm. your fingerprints are all over the region and yeah. we you. we appreciate it <clears throat> so as i mentioned before each quarter we recognize a, a company a business that has gone uh, above and beyond, done something special in the community um, <clears throat> for its citizens and possibly even other businesses. Uh, <clears throat> the December 2021 tornado uh, was an unprecedented, uh, unprecedented event, uh, not only for our community, but actually for several states. Individuals in the community lost everything that they owned. <clears throat> But our community uh, rallied together, uh, and both businesses and citizens stepped up uh, when, its, when its neighbors needed it. <clears throat> One of the uh, companies that went above and beyond, and I, I know that they did because they're my neighbors and I, I saw it, was <clears throat> Brown's uh, Farm Fresh Produce and Meats. Uh, the Browns were right in the middle of the tornado damage. They had some tor tornado damage themselves. <clears throat> it would have been just as easy for them to say, you know, I'm gonna take care of, of myself, take care of my, my damages, but they didn't do that. They set up uh, their property as really a base camp for uh, rescue and relief uh, people. They cooked meals. Uh, they provided space for other people to cook meals, provide shelter. <clears throat> uh, so they went above and beyond to help their neighbors uh, from, from cooking meals all the way to going out and trying to help rebuild. Uh, <clears throat> Corey and Michael started their vegetable stand uh, several years back and they they had the vegetables out and they had the money box and it was a honor system type of deal. And they've grown that into, <clears throat> if, you, if you've been out lately, they've got a beautiful new building. Uh, they've really worked hard to, uh, to nurture that business. <clears throat> and, um, you know, they, they've hired people to help with their sales or harvesting and so <clears throat> even more recently, they've started their Browns Farm Fun Land, which has allowed the local school systems to take kids on field trips somewhere local uh, to learn about agriculture uh, and to, to have fun at the same time. So <clears throat> we've selected uh, Corey and Michael Brown uh, as our fourth quarter uh, Excellence Award winners, and they will be, <clears throat> along with our three previous quarterly winners, uh, they will be in the running for the uh, Business of the Year at our gala on December 8th. 
So I, I hope you all all <clears throat> congratulate them if you see them. Um, also, uh, speaking of the gala, <clears throat> today is the last day to vote for the People's Choice Awards. There are several categories. Uh, if you haven't done that, I urge you to. Uh, you can find the voting platform on uh, the Ohio County Chamber of Commerce web Facebook page. Uh, if you don't mind, go vote and share uh, so that we can get as many votes as possible. And then the uh, awards will be on the 8th. Uh, thank you for your time. Good job, Chuck. Thank you, Mr. Price. Um, not that I was not paying rapt attention to Chuck's um, opening talk about Browns, but I did take that time to vote, so it does not take a long time. So literally while sitting here, I went to our Facebook page, I voted and submitted it, and then um, I'm going to share it in just a moment. So I urge everyone to do that because it, it's, it's great to be able to step back and recognize our local industries and our local businesses and um, recognize them for um, the hard work they put in each year. Um, so our Christmas gala is December 8th. It is such a good time. It is a lovely way to kick off our holiday season and get together with, um, with our, um, our, our local business people and, and really just celebrate, um, celebrate all that we've done and our relationships and fellowship together. Um, we need sponsors. Judy, we have four? Several more now. Several more now. Well, we need several more. So if you haven't sponsored, we ask that you do so. Um, I think the levels go from platinum, gold, silver. So there, there is a, I promise you, there is a, a dollar amount that will meet your budget. Um, it's just a nice way to get your name um, out into the community. All of our sponsors are recognized in some shape, form, or fashion on our enhanced social media pages as well as at the event. Um, We need gala sponsors, and also we're going to need silent auction items. Um, I did not realize when I became vice president that, that the Christmas gala was under my um, organization. So um, I need you all to give me silent auction items so that I don't have to call and beg you all because it, it's going to get it's going to get embarrassing when I start crying on the phone trying to get them. So if you have a, a, an auction item you'd like to donate, please reach out to me because if you don't, I will be calling you. Um, upcoming events, we have a ribbon cutting, um, and I have no clue how to pronounce this name. What is it, Judy? I really don't know how to pronounce Malika. Malika. What is Malika? What is their business? Okay, we're not sure. But... Oh, yeah, salon and spa. Now that I can get behind. So um, there's a ribbon cutting this Friday um, at noon, and that is at 904 Main Street in Hartford which is kind of um, really close to Commonwealth Community Bank, just right down the street from them. So we'll um, um, welcome anyone who would like to attend and help them celebrate the opening of their business. Our homemakers are having their annual Christmas bazaar on Saturday, the 19th. Um, is that, Judy, at the Christmas bazaar, is it here? So here at the um, Senior Citizen Center, and we know they'll have lots of wonderful um, craft items and food mm -hmm. for Christmas presents. Um, City of Beaverdam is having their Christmas parade on the first weekend of December. Um, that's December 3rd. Third. Thank you, Paul. And it's 530? 5. 5. So close. Um, I think if you go to Beaverdam Tourism's page or the City of Beaverdam's page, there's registration to enter your, um, your um, unit in the parade. We're going to put the MacMobile, our new mobile access clinic, in the parade this year. And we'll be um, live streaming it again. Oh. And we, uh, have, we have a couple of surprises, visitors that we're going to be announcing here in the next few days. It's going to be there. It's going to be something like we've never seen. Well, like, Paul is stepping up the game. I'm going to have to buy some extra lights for the MacMobile. Um, and it was fun with the live streaming. I think that I thought was really neat is people who maybe have grown up in our community but no longer live here were watching it and providing commentary. And it was a little nostalgic for them to be able to, to participate in our our local parades. Um, our um, very active AARP group will be meeting here for their Christmas dinner on Tuesday, December 6th. I think it's a very minimum um, membership. You could probably pay at the door for your membership and they are just an up and coming group of um, individuals who are just um, 
doing lots of fun things and um, enjoying fellowship together. Um, City of Hartford is having Christmas on the Square the um, second weekend of December. That's December 10th. Um, I think if you go to the City of Hartford page, there is a vendor registration um, form. Um, and I believe they're going to have an ice skating rink at it. So that'll be fun. We're going to bring our Mac Mobile out to that also. Um, and then um, today, if you have not gotten your flu shot, which I will not make you raise your hand and tell me if you've not gotten your flu shot, unlike Scott and asking about the classes. Uh, flu is out there, guys. Flu season has hit hard and heavy and early for us this year. We're seeing both type A and type B. Our clinics are full of people with um, the um, flu virus. We're seeing COVID a little on the uprise. And then we also have a lot of RSV, um, RSV, yes, going around. So if you haven't got your flu shot, um, the preliminary data is showing that it's effective against protecting you from the flu. This is one of those years that we feel like the shot is really matching the strain. And I urge you to go and get your flu shot. Today, you can walk or walk right into the um, parking lot of Ohio County Family, Ohio County Wellness Center. We have our Mac Mobile out there. We're doing um, COVID vaccinations. We do have the booster and we're doing flu shots. So when you leave here, go right on down to the Mac Mobile and get your flu shot. Um, any other announcements? Oh, Mayor Sanford. Oh, Time back with the Christmas thing. You, you uh, want to come on up? No, I'm good from right here. I got a big mouth. I love uh, it. On Friday night, of course, the whole week we have our festivals the whole weekend long. We do a lot nice. of stuff. The toy giveaway, the parade. On Friday night, we received a grant from AARP for a project, our legacy project called Door Star Pass. Aww. Fifteen doors have been. Most of them are already finished up now. Some of them being wrapped up. We're going to have a reception on Friday night at City Hall at six thirty and unveil all the doors. Hopefully all the artists will be there as well. And uh, we're gonna make a big deal out of that. Lovely. Because this weekend uh, the Christmas festival is kicking off. Next year will be the city of Beaverham successful centennial since it was chartered by the state legislature in April of 1873. But it also turns out it's the 225th anniversary when the city was settled in 1798. So we have we're kind of kicking off our successful centennial activities with the Christmas festival. Uh, we're gonna do stuff pretty much every month next year. We've got a lot of stuff planned, uh, some pretty unique things as well. Uh, we also, after the Christmas festival, when I said we do the toy giveaway, the play, we're doing an ugly sweater contest, the uh, dessert contest. The 17th, we're actually doing a, the Tourism Commission is doing a Christmas show at the high school. Oh, yes. Never had like this before. It's uh, Rodney Atkins, which is a country singer, his wife. He does, he's full band, he plays a lot of his music, but they also do Christmas, a lot of, most of us play Christmas. Uh, kind of kicking off the holidays. We'll Is that the Rod day. and the Rose show? <laughs> the Rod and Rose yeah. show? Yes, mm -hmm. awesome. And we're hoping to do some stuff. Uh, I know Becky's working with some of the vendors to try to, or businesses to make that a day. We know Christmas shopping season is pretty much over with by the 17th, but maybe promote some of that last minute unique stuff. Because we have several shops in the market in the area that's got some unique items to try to promote. And then also by the end of this month, we should be announcing at least three, if not four, of our shows for the amphitheater. Oh, fun. So. Oh, you're not busy for, enough. Just in time for Christmas. Y'all need a few more activities in Beaverdown. We're working on that. Okay. <laughs> it's time. That's pretty impressive. With that, speaking of the Rod and um, Rose um, Christmas show, I'm going to let Paul draw um, the winning ticket. And if you draw your own, Paul, you make your own choice there, buddy. Just the last three numbers, okay? Five, four, four. Who's the winner? Five, four, four. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> oh, I see that. Well, you and Jeff enjoyed that, Treva. That will be a way to celebrate your your holiday season. Um, any other announcements from our group? Okay, go forth, get your flu shot, and have a good day. Thank you.